Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Those who follow me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. And he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him king as his ancestor David was. And he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. This kingdom will never end. We light this candle to remind us of Mary, who was willing, first of all people, to let the light of the Lord shine through her and bring the Savior into the world. Because of her faithfulness and her love, Jesus, the Messiah, was born to us. Let us pray. Father, you called Mary to be the mother of your son, so that the world could be saved and brought to new birth. Help us also to bring the light of Christ to birth, wherever there is darkness and despair, and to work for the coming of your kingdom. Amen. So here we are. Just a few days short before Christmas, and we have lit our candles along the way, the candles of our Advent wreath, as a way of marking our journey through Advent, hope and peace and joy, and now love. We've lit these candles and they've become signposts along the way, markers that tell us what the point of the journey is. You see, the idea behind every journey is to be changed, to encounter some sort of change. If you are journeying from point A to point B, then you physically go through a change of location. If you're undergoing a personal change in some way, uh, the intention is to be transformed internally in some way or the other, to be affected. If you go through a journey, whatever that journey is, and you remain unchanged, well, that kind of undercuts the very point of a journey in the first place. And so at this point, after lighting that candle of love, perhaps we can ask ourselves, How are we to be affected by love? Because we don't simply light the candle to say that we believe that love is important, or even biblical. Uh, That's not what we're doing. No, we light the Advent candle of love as a way of indicating that we are opening up our lives to the presence of divine love, to be changed by it. The celebration of the Christ child makes no biblical, it makes no theological, or it makes no personal sense for us if we strip away any notion that in the Christ child we meet divine love. And yes, that idea is so far beyond our comprehension that we could never fully disclose it. But that doesn't make it untrue. We may never be able to understand it. We may never be able to describe it. But it doesn't mean that we can't be changed by it. Because it is because of love, unyielding love, unquenchable and unstoppable love, that Christ wrapped himself in vulnerability and weakness. It is because of love that Christ preached and healed and challenged and confronted. It is because of love that he did not forsake the cross, but overcame it through sacrifice and self-offering. The manger is the cradle of love. And we do a disservice to it. We do not do it justice if we fail to see it this way. So the candle of love is a way to remind us that our Advent journey is about approaching the child that Christ child in the manger, with a willingness to be transformed by his love. Love must be worked out in our lives. It must be lived out. 
And with all these terms, hope and joy and peace and now love, we always miss the full reality of it if we only know the definition. If we only think about what the parsing of the word means, but don't live it out in our lives, we miss something. Yes, in Jesus we experience hope, but we're also called to be a people of hope. We express peace. We exude joy. In that earth-shattering love that defines all heaven and earth at Christmas is something to so change us as we live it out. Heaven erupts in praise. Mary treasures everything in her heart. The shepherds return to the fields telling everybody what they have seen and heard. And the kings bow down and worship. Because love is inherently relational, a matter of heart and a matter of body. It always calls us to express it in some way and to express it to someone else. Love is always poured outwards. It's never kept in ourselves. Like last week, I want to end with uh, a reading, not, um, not from Bonhoeffer this time. On my shelf is a wonderful book, which is uh, called The Diary of Private Prayers from a man named John Bailey. Um, it's kind of a month of prayers, morning prayers and evening prayers. And a lot of them are just uh, wonderfully moving and, and inspiring. And so uh, on the evening of the 19th day, um, this is what he prays. O holy and blessed Trinity, help me to dwell so fully in the mystery of this heavenly love that all hatred and malice may be rooted out of my heart and life. Help me to love you as you first loved me. And in loving you, help me also to love my neighbor. And in loving you and my neighbor, Help me to be saved from all love of myself. To you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory and praise forever. Amen. Where can love be expressed outwards in your life this week? Where can you show love in the way that God shows love in Christ? In Christ, God embraces our world. Where can you embrace another? Where can you reach out into a place of hurt or a longing or impatience? The gift of love can be a healing gift because it brings with it just the wonderful acknowledgement that we don't journey alone that we are present with each other. And so may this candle of love reveal the warmth of God's love for you and shine a light on the opportunity that you have to express that love to another and invite someone else into your journey to the manger. Amen.